Hello students, today I welcome you to ARP 3 on 5 Digital Visualization Lecture 04 Introduction to Rhino. In this class, I will try to explain how you can get into Rhino, how and why it is easier to learn, and how it is related to other applications you have already been using for a time now, and also how to generate basic surfaces let's get to it so Rhino is a pretty straightforward software and its interface is quite easy once you get used to it there are several toolbars once you can see here says standard C plane set view so you can change your workspaces or tools according to this and this could be done and also there are several tools here like uh, select or cancel line polyline you can see almost all the 2d commands are quite like cad they are circle ellipse rectangle and we could do it that way one thing that is different from cad is that the command line is up here not here we could drag and drop it but i prefer it here and also there are four viewports uh, per, uh, uh, not like autocad also there are four viewports unlike AutoCAD and they are top, front, right and perspective and of course it's a 3D software. Also AutoCAD is also 3D software but it is more flexible in 3D in terms of movement and rotation orbit etc. So let's get to it. Uh, so if we want to maximize one specific viewport all we have to do is double click on the name of it and then you can see there are uh, different tabs here i prefer using these tabs these are quite easy to use or you could double click it and make it minimized again and double click on any other one to get maximized so this is your basic interface and the layers are here layers are quite like autocad you could create a new layer here i would go into that later but the one specific thing that you have to do in order to get the maximized use of Rhinosaurus is to change its shortcut command into AutoCAD commands. So in order to do that we have to go to options here and then go to aliases. This is the first time you have to do it. Uh, you have to do it only the first time and for later times it would be as you have saved it so we have to import something here these commands are not quite like autocad so let's go to our browser search for autocad alias for rhino uh, here is the wiki.macnil.com go to this site the first site that comes and then download this this will be downloaded somewhere so let's save it to our folder let's keep ourselves organized so arc315 uh, acad aliases for rhino show in folder extract it here and then just import that text file that we have extracted so here acad alias for rhino 120 alias found 120 imported and then okay so here's one wonderful thing now all the 2d commands we use in autocad most of the time are imported here like if we press l enter and please note that i have already set up a shortcut command here so whatever i press you can see here whatever key i press in my keyboard uh, you can see that here is the line I'll enter just and also like AutoCAD if I press F8 it is ortho on now if I could press PL enter you could see that this happens also if I wanted to trim I would have just selected it tier enter and do this now there are certain differences from AutoCAD like if i wanted to trim i could not press double space i would have to select the reference and then trim it also uh, for align there is no specific align command and that align there is 
in AutoCAD uh, that uh, scales and orients that object in a specific manner. Uh, in Rhino, align is quite different. So the most common uh, command like align here is orient. So let's see what orient does. So let's say I have a curve line and a specific rectangle. So I could just go to orient, I could type in and then select number one and number two and then go to here number one and number two and you can see there are some target points given already. Uh, I could copy, I could scale as well, I could scale in 3D, I could scale in 1D, whatever I want. So let's have some fun with Orient. Let's get used to it a bit. It's quite fun. There would not be any specific assignments from it, but it is fun to do. So let's do it. Uh, let's create a tiny rectangle here or a hexagon if you want. So let's do this. And, and this rectangle should be fine. So let's orient it. Copy yes, scale 3D. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So you can see this is quite fun and advanced from AutoCAD as well. We could not do this in AutoCAD. It would have taken us a long time to do it. We have to array it several times. But in Rhino, we can have fun with this. So this is fun, right? So that's one difference. We, I could go on and on. That is fun. Also, I have several uh, interesting advancement in offset as well. So if I could press O, it is offset. I could type in the distance. But see, there is cap and some type of tolerance here. So I could put in a cap. I could keep a flat cap and you can see it automatically becomes a wall, a rectangle. So let's make a PL and create a complex line and then let's press O enter and you can see that I can instantly create this type of things. So this is quite fun. I did not go into 2D commands in details because almost all of them are as like as AutoCAD and as you can see in here options I can change the units of it. It's quite smart. It's not like AutoCAD where you change the unit and then you have to scale all over again. If you change specifically from millimeters, by default it is millimeters and you change it into inches. Uh, it asks you if it would have to scale it by itself. So if you could press yes, all the scale factors, all the millimeters you have put in, if you have, uh, are converted into inches. So that is quite handy. So that is for the 2D commands of this specific softwares. I think you could have fun and if you have any questions I can answer, but I don't think that would be necessary as you all are quite adept with uh, AutoCAD. Now one thing that I find beautiful in Rhino is the possibilities of exploration. Rhino has uh, completely followed through the design theory you have all learned that a point moves and it becomes a line and the line moves and it becomes a surface and the surface moves and it becomes a solid and it has uh, arranged all the commands right here just like that. You can have all the curve commands right in here. You can also have it in here. There are several curves commands as you can see but all the curves commands are right here and right before your eyes and there are surface commands. So I, no one can teach any software in four lectures but if you want to explore there are possibilities. So yes you can go through this and you can see after curve then it becomes solid so if you can do anything with curves you can then select that curve and go into this type of solid and then uh, you can go into this type of surface and then after you made a surface you can go to this solid and work with it so yes this is quite interesting and gives immense possibilities of exploration 
Now, before I jump into 3D, uh, I would just want to point you out some specific uh, differences in the interface from a 2D interface uh, to a 3D interface. Like, I already have a perspective, and if I select it, this gumball comes. This is called gumball, this is specific icon. And if yours is not showing here, this could be uh, enabled or disabled right here. May, this is already given as gumball so this is quite important and we would be using it to move around or extrude our things like if i would want to extrude it i would just have to click on this circle here and then type in a value like this and you can see this is already extruded also there are some uh, differences in layer we could just the layering system is almost like AutoCAD but if you want to change the layer of an object the process is a little different so say I want to change uh, this object from default layer to layer 1 just select the object and then right click upon this layer 0 1 and then press change object layer so the object is changed also there is layer properties here and there are some differences in snaps as well the o snap is right here i don't have to press os to get into these settings i can change it here all the way uh, like end snap near snap point snap mid center so far and so on but you can see there is one specific one that is already disabled here that is project so what does project do project is kind of a 2.5d snapping so before I get into uh, creating interesting surfaces, let's see what this project does. And it would really help us making 3D spaces precise. So let's say I have uh, one specific line like this. A very creepy line in the elevation. And a very creepy line in the... Uh, plan and all of these are 3d not in plan everything is 3d say let's delete these things just for convenience so let's go to top and we can see there are two intersecting lines which are in 3d like this so if i wanted to draw a specific line from this reference in 2d plane i could not do it uh, in a general manner say i want to draw something like this but after i draw you'll we'll see uh, this is our line new this has happened and this is not desired i did not want this so what could i do to draw it in 2d i just have to press project this would whatever i pick whatever point i pick it would draw it in zero plane uh, in xy plane specifically so let's do that thing again plan would be the same exactly the same but the result would be quite different this time you can see this is a completely 2d line so project does this so if you ever want to draw anything in any specific plane apart from the 3d lines or taking references from 3d lines project is your thing so i think i have covered all the basic interfaces so let's get to the surface generation part the interesting part before going into complex surface it is important to understand what is complex surface we all want to build something like this. This is Hyder Ali from the Hadid. But if we don't understand the nature of surface properly, we would eventually fail. So there are some ba very basic surfaces that could be understood as freeform or even straight surfaces. And then after uh, adding, subtracting, or in some cases, in parametric cases, multiplying or dividing these surfaces, we could get complex surfaces. So, in this lecture, I would try to cover all the basic 
simple surfaces that are there and then in the next lecture i will try to go into complex surfaces so the very first surface that comes in our way is extrusion and i'm quite sure you ha all have used it somewhere and it's quite common in sketchup it's called push pull so let's see how it's done in rhino so in rhino let's create a polyline and don't forget everything i write is written down here as well so say this is our extrude this is the curve that we need to extrude let's give it a little thickness with offset let's keep it a cap with flat and let's make the distance 10 or 5 plus 5 looks nice so this is the profile that we need to extrude there are several ways to do it but i prefer just writing down the extrude curve and that's that so you can see this does not look right as it's in wireframe mode so if i want to change the mode of this viewport i would have to go in perspective and go to shaded you can see it's already done now you could face several problems while doing it uh, let's say you press extrude and uh, this happens this is not solid and you could ask why so when you press extrude let's do it one more time when you press extrude curve you can see there are several uh, things that rhino asks you what to do so there is one option solid you could press yes to make it more solid and then there is both sides so if you go one direction it automatically mirrors into other and it want that uh, you could set base point or so on but i think this is okay this is done so this is one type of extrusion you could also extrude it in a different manner say there is a specific polyline and you want to extrude it uh, with this profile so i could press extrude along curve extrude curve along curve so it asks me to select the curves that i want to extrude after pressing these curves i need to press space and then it asks me what the path curve will be you can see this type of geometry is automatically done so this is quite fun all right and also i could play with the solid settings and so on so this is fun the next type of surface is also quite common it's called sweep one rail in rhino and i think you are familiar with it from sketchup by the name follow me so let's see how it's done in order to do it we need a path rail and a cross section curve so let's make a path rail let's say we want to make a free from sitting of some sort say this is the way i want the sitting to flow now let's create a cross section let's see it's kind of a sofa right so let's create a comfortable cross section let's say it's a public sitting uh, keep in mind that the selection also works as like autocad uh, if i go from here to here from right to left it selects everything and if I go from left to right, it selects only what's in the selection box. So if I wanted to select the points, which automatically comes in Rhino 6, I could do this. So let's say this is the cross section of our setting. Keep it somewhere here. Let's turn off the project for now. Let's do it like this. Let's rotate it from here everything i do is just like autocad so let's say i want this cross section to flow along this 
all I need to do is type in sweep 1 it asks me to select the rail this would be that the direction it needs to flow and then it asks me to select the cross section curves note that it says curves not curve so I could select multiple curves if I wanted to so this is already done this is quite interesting next comes the sweep to rail command it's quite like sweep one rail but instead of one guide rail it has two guide rails so let's see so let's say we have a curve line like this and another one just like this and have a cross section just like this let's say it's kind of a fancy boat one important command we would use time to time is rebuild so let's say i this specific curve has two control points but i want four control points instead of two so i would have to rebuild it i could rebuild also in 3d i would go into it in more details in complex surfaces but let's stick with this right now so press ok and let's do it again so you can see that I can change the point count as well as I can change the degree. So there is currently two points in this curve. I want to change it into four. Let's press OK. Let's press Escape. And then just change the position of these two curves. So I want these specific curves to flow along these two curves. Not one, but two. So I would have to press Sweep 2 sorry sweep 2 and then it asks me to select the first rail after that the second rail and then the cross section curve and you can see this quite interesting thing happens and while in sweep 1 rail the whole cross sections flow, flow all along the curve without changing the scale you can see this is specific in this specific case the cross section changes its scale according to the distance of these two curves and in one point it gets into zero so it's quite interesting and we could generate quite a interesting complex curve from it as well i'll show it in later class after this comes surface from two three or four edged curves it's quite self-explanatory let's say i have different curve surfaces let's rebuild this uh, let's say i have several surfaces like this several edges like this so let's copy it rotate it exactly 90 degrees move it to this point and then copy this one again here let's join the points otherwise this command won't work all the comp uh, specific curves has to be precisely joined Let's copy this one from here and let's join it it has to be really precise otherwise it won't work so let's say this happens this is done so let's put in the command surface or we could go for different surface command from here as well so my command is going to be surface from two three or four edit curves select the edges and you can see Rhino automatically generates an approximate surface that was needed to be done so yes this is quite interesting next comes the most important command that you would be using in Rhino and the most widely used command this is called loft and it is most widely used because it uses different sections in it and we as architects tend to think through sections as well as plans of course but sections intrigue us 
So let's see how it is helpful. So for loft we would have to have different cross sections at first. Let's say I go into any kind of elevation and create some different cross sections. They can be anything. So let's say they are something like They don't have to have the same point counts. They can be anything. And that's why this is so uh, liberating. Say I want to join these sections and see what type of surface it generates. Say I have a gallery and these three types of sections have come up. Now what type of gallery it would look like. And it's quite like sketching. Let's just press loft and keep in mind while lofting you have to do it sequentially. This is one, this is two, this is three. And if you don't do it, it would just go awry. So you can see this happened. This has happened due to the direction of the curves. I think this curve here has something to do with it. Yes, the middle curve was a bit different directional but I think I have fixed it and after this you can see a beautiful curve section has been generated so what would have happened if I did not do it the right way there could be several things that could have gone wrong I could have done it without the sequence and this would have happened let's say this was my first this was second and this was third so this happened a really weird type of non-euclidean geometry which i did not want and one error we have already seen but let's go through it again let's select sequentially and yes uh, you can see the surfaces have crisscrossed over one another we could uh, basically solved it by aligning the curves in loft command so align curves and click upon this and you can see this has happened also one thing you have to keep in mind that the curves has to have similar properties like if you have used one open-ended curve and one closed curves it would not have been successful uh, if you use different open-ended curves or open curves you have to use all the curves as open and if you use closed curves you have to use all the curves as closed let's see what would happen if i used open curves mm. so let's say i have made a shade of some sort a basic pavilion or something like that nothing fancy say this is the cross section of my pavilion in different places and then I select it you can see I could do this as well also I could do this and you can see I could make it a closed loft and in that case this would have happened this is also quite interesting you could find different applicability of it so that's one and also there is one thing more there are different types of loft what like this you can see there is normal loft there is loose loft where it generates a very loose type of geometry with a very loose type of uh, resultant of these curves you could say tight lofts and it would go to the exact accuracy and you could go for straight sections where it is quite like this and sometimes you could use it yes this is also quite an interesting type but in most of the free flowing surfaces we tend not to use it or you could place uniform loft as well so do we, these are the basic pros, cons and typologies of lofts and you could have really good applicability of it. Now sometimes in our design project we don't have any clue what we are going to do. We have some basic lines in our head 
like we have a basic uh, planar direction or some cross sections along it not all so we can't use loft we can't use sweep what could we use in this type of scenario the one solution could be patch so in order to do patch we can have anything we like so we have an ellipse like this and we have some sort of curve going through it one point to another and it's quite creepy let's say it has eight points for some reasons for some unknown reasons we don't know why let's make them in different heights I don't know how it's going to look like and it might fail sometimes it does it's part of life you have to bear with it let's say this is one cross section and this is the plan so what could we do just select all of them and type in patch and we could go for a preview and yes these have been generated and this is fun I could go somewhere with it. This could be a roof of some sort. This could be a shelter of some sort. I don't know, but this is interesting. And this gives me liberation to do whatever I want. This gives me freedom of thought. I don't have to think like the computer. The computer solves my problem and thinks like me. In the end, let's finish this lecture with an interesting type of surface. Let's say I have an image data and I want to generate heights from it. It would be called height field from images and let's see how to do it. Uh, in order to do this we have to have an image first with black and white data. So let's go into Photoshop first and create some type of these bumps with some soft brushes. Let's say this is our thing. Let's save it as JPEG and we will have to show it here. Let's name it height field. Okay. And then let's go to Rhino. Yeah, we could type in height field from images or we could do this. Let's show it where it is. And we could just uh, click and drag and then we could for more precision we have to put in more points let's say I want it 50 by 50 and let's say I want height as 10 120 inches let's see what happens so you can see this one represents the Photoshop file I just created and created height from it the black went into depth exact blacks are in zero and the 100% whites are in 10 feet so I could do it again let's keep this mode rendered and do it again just for our own understanding and I could set image as texture and let's put it a bit lesser now let's say it's 36 inches you can see the blacks are like that and the whites are like that so yes this is something we could do to make our contours if we had contour data from any type of gis files we could just create it from here so with this this lecture has come to an end it has been a long lecture but i think it would be useful if we will go through it uh, more than once and find different problems we could discuss it and always feel free to ask me anything and feel free to google anything you like so enjoy rhino i hope this would be a life-changing software for you